Exorcist and welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Tonight I will be reviewing Dreadnought by April Daniels. Danny Tozer has a, has a problem. She just inherited the powers of Dreadnought, the world's greatest superhero. Until Dreadnought fell out of the sky and died right in front of her, Danny was trying to keep people from finding out she's transgender, but before he expired, Dreadnought passed his mantle to her, and those secondhand superpowers transformed Danny's body into what she's always thought it should be. Now there's no hiding that she's a girl. It should be the happiest time of her life, but Danny's first weeks finally living finally living in a body that fits her are more difficult and complicated than she could have imagined. Between her father's dangerous obsession with curing her girlhood, her best friend suddenly acting like he's enti entitled to date her, and her fellow superheroes arguing over her place in their ranks, Danny feels like she's in over her head. She doesn't have time to adjust. Dreadnought's murderer, a cyborg named Utopia, still haunts the streets of Newport City, threatening destruction if Danny can't sort through the confusion of coming out, master her powers, and stop Utopia in time, humanity falls at extinction. So, this is the uh, first book in the Nemesis trilogy by uh, April Daniels, and honestly, it's pretty decent. Like, a lot of people were complaining that this is too much too similar to both Marvel and DC and I can kind of see what they're talking about with like uh, characters like Dreadnought who's supposedly supposed to be a mix of Green Lantern and uh, Superman judging by the idea of they've got super strength they've got the ability to fly they transfer their powers over through like this beam of light that's somewhat similar to a, a Green Lantern ring. But there's also like a Night Witch who is supposed to be like. She kind of feels like a mix of a Raven and a Vixen due to. She's a witch, and she's got, like, these, uh, Wiccan powers, and she, I mean, you could also argue she's, like, Scarlet Witch, but the main thing is she is the biggest, uh, hater on, uh, Dreadnought. Um, on top of that, we also have character, weapon-based characters, like, uh, Calamity, who, in some sense... Some people could uh, reflect on she's similar to Deadpool or uh, the Punisher, or except now she's got like one hand, so uh, or one arm, and that kind of makes it hard for her to fight. Honestly, there's all kinds of superheroes in here, and there's this whole hierarchy where there's the superheroes who don't want anything to do with. Uh, being a superhero uh, there's another faction like they like being called spe they like saying that they have special abilities but they don't tell them that they're like mutated or they've got superpowers they just say they've got like a gift uh, there's uh, the superhero leagues, like, there's the White Capes, who are, like, the Justice League, or Marvel, the Avengers, uh, who fight in, like, a team and go by a full, uh, good idea, like, think of it like Star Wars, they're the Jedi, ultimately, uh, but they're also heavily flawed and uh, their rules are confusing a bit. Like when it comes to Daniel, I mean Danielle, who uh, some of them think that she doesn't belong and she doesn't deserve the mantle and doesn't deserve the powers that uh, Dreadnought gave her because she's trans and because it's like a 
she is muddying the powers of the female superheroes and honestly th April Daniels made a Night Witch kind of like a representation of the toxic feminist movement uh, who refused to see transgender women as actual women on top of also uh, like getting critical of who deserves superpowers and who doesn't. Uh, there's also Carapace who is uh, the original Dread who is Dreadnought's uh, best friend who had an idea of who they wanted to be the new Dreadnought and they're not too happy about uh, Daniel but later on they kind of try to uh, talk to them and try to help them but Danielle refuses before I get move on let me uh, finish with the factions boring it doesn't seem like there is a legion kind of or a super villain team in this uh, just the villain utopia there are like there is one thug that almost kills Daniel's father in the book and I mean yeah I honestly I think I'm with Daniel in this where she shouldn't have saved him because her father becomes a real dick in this like attacks her uh, hits her assaults her both her parents kick her out of the house because they want nothing to do with her and uh, they call her uh, homophobic slurs they are like these parents are really transphobic and want nothing to do with their daughter well their child I'm just gonna call her child as a gender neutral term because yes at the beginning they're a guy and they're stuck in a guy's body and through the rest of the book they're finally in a girl's body but I kind of want to stay neutral here despite my support of Danielle and her transformation uh, the best friend whose name I can't remember because he doesn't feature as prominently in this near the near the middle in the end because I mean most of it is most of their interactions at the beginning are through like game chat which actually I found really funny and I really enjoyed hearing uh, the two avatar gaming names uh, that they used and uh, but yeah the guy turns into a real asshole once he finds out that uh, Daniel was a girl and that they became they gain the uh, female body and uh, they become entitled like the summary said at the beginning like oh so you're gay Ye no I like girls I've always liked girls uh, oh so well why don't you why won't you date me why We've known each other long enough. We've been friends for years. Now that you're a girl, I think it would be more important that you date me. And it's just like, I wanted to punch him so fucking hard because of that. Like, this guy's logic is so bullshit. Like, he is, ta he is that friend that is just so desperate for a relationship that he'd do anything for it and he'd do anything like I'm glad she was able to get away from him and find uh, Calamity who in this book's name is Sarah uh, her alter ego is Sarah another classmate that of both the best friend and uh, um, Daniel Danielle and uh Yeah, no, I just really hate the best friend and the parents in this book. Like, they are 
horrible people. Uh, the relationship between Calamity and uh, Danielle is actually really good. Like, she's Calamity is the supportive friend who's trying to help her through all the uh, hatred that her family and her friend is throwing at her. Uh, they go out caping most of the time, and she's just a really good friend and a really good uh, support system for Danielle. So she's got to deal with the uh, problems of most transgender people, which is the uh, high level of transphobia in her world and in our world. Like, this is... This book is a reflect. It's not just a superhero story. It's a. It's pretty much a reflection on the things that trans people have to go through uh, all the time, like people attacking them, telling them they're not, they're not the real gender that they need to stay the gender that they were apparently born as that they uh that they'll never be a guy or a girl well, that they just that they're uh child predators or they're just freaks and it's just this is a really good example of like real world going into uh fiction and just this is rare because there I'm gonna be honest there aren't that many uh, transgender stories where it goes through the ideas of uh, the transformation and uh, the idea that they go through a lot of hardships like I mean I joined this one uh, Discord for a comic that I really like. It's uh, on webtoons. It's called um, uh, Well, there's I want to be a cute anime girl. There's a uh, serious trans vibes. There's uh, The prettiest platypus which is one of my real-time favorites and I've actually had the chance to talk to one of the authors of that comic and uh, I've made really good friends with her and her friends group on her discord and honestly it's that's the sad part uh, the comics are the most prominent one to show the pre-surgery uh, point of view where most novels romance novels young adult novels adult novels uh, only really show the, uh, what happens after the surgery, which is kind of bullshit, because I feel the pre-surgery years are, and, uh, that period is a lot more important for young trans people trying to figure themselves out, uh, but anyway, the bottom line is... Danielle has to deal with the transphobia of her family and friends, uh, while also dealing with a bit of it in the, uh, the Legion, I'm gonna call them, because literally there is no, I can't think of the name of the, uh, superhero team. It's something Pacifica. The Legion Pacifica, I think. There's one other character who, they're just so, uh, hateful towards her because I get it Dreadnought was their friend was a really good friend and a really good ally but they're just taking the hate out on the wrong person and they're just tearing her down she is not the person you should be taking your anger out on uh, the person they should be taking their anger out on actually is the villain of this story who we technically don't get to meet until later on because this story relies on the mystery of who Utopia is and uh, what her plan is, what they're doing, uh, why she killed 
the last dreadnought um and what her plans for danielle is and it's just really fun watching calamity and uh danielle go through the mystery and try and uh, gain information gain and then the battle between daniel and uh i mean danielle and utopia at the end is just really good and i don't want to ruin it because you guys definitely should read this book uh you should definitely read it for yourself to get the full impact of it but just the mystery the uh friendship between calamity and the new dreadnought is just really fun to read about uh you, we learn about calamity's past and what happened to her father and why she has the mantle and just her family in general it's just this is a really good book and uh a really good superhero story like I could not put this down like similar to uh, last night at the uh, Telegraph Club this is just it's not a romance story but it is a really it does its genre just as well as the Telegraph Club like this is supposed to be a fictional transgender superhero story that relies on mystery and intrigue to uh, get its viewers to listen to the, uh, I believe it was 12 to 16 hours of an audiobook that I listened to. But my point is, this is a definite must read if you're really into LGBTQ uh, stories and especially if you're into or looking for something about a trans character actually it's a uh, 11 hours and 28 minutes but yeah it digs into the idea that it's not all about uh it's not all about the transition it's more so about what the person is going through during the transition and uh how it affects their family life and uh, their life in general. And that's why I'm giving this an 11 out of 11 uh, for just being a really good book and something that I could really connect with. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, connected with this. Like I got this recommendation from another YouTuber whose name I'm kind of blanking on. And I was a bit iffy about reading it, but yeah, it really surprised me, and it turned out to be a really good read. Uh, but yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, click the little notification bell for more of our content. Uh, and maybe if we get enough likes, maybe Silva will finally tr turn me back or find a new way to turn me back into uh, my old form. If not, I might be stuck like this for at least uh, until May or June. Who knows? <laughs> Obviously, we're going to have to come up with new outfits. But, uh, yeah. I just want to continue to remind you guys that this is all Silva's fault. And it's up to him to uh, try and turn me back. So, yeah. Have a great night, guys.